250 B students. Well, it's is better late than never. I would hope to get a video up sooner about the Markov process uh, than this, but I uh, didn't have a chance to until now, but uh, better late than never. So a few people have been asking me about how to set up the matrix for the Markov process problems. And so I came up with an example here. Um, it's actually a lot of words and it involves a matrix that's going to end up being kind of three by three with some messy numbers in it so we're not actually going to do the whole diagonalization process but we can still talk about the basics of setting it up which is important um, this process is one that is similar to uh, a, a process where you have two sections of a class being taught by two different professors and students are switching between classes every day and you want to know at the end of the semester what fraction of students are in each class. Um, another example is imagine that you have ants crawling between a bedroom and a kitchen and you have um, a certain fraction of those ants are switching uh, between those two rooms every hour. You could ask well what fraction of the ants in the long run would be in each of those two rooms. And um, I had put together a problem like that in the review packet. I recently uh, modified the solution to that problem a little bit. So if you've looked at that, you might want to uh, take another look at it to see uh, if my new solution maybe fits a little bit better with, or aligns better with that uh, professor sections uh, with students switching sections uh, a little bit better. So anyway, this is just uh, another example of the same kind of process. We're looking at a land usage situation. In 1940, 10% uh, of all of the land in a particular county was urban, 50% was rural, and 40% was agricultural. So 10 years later would be one decade later. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to measure time in decades. All right. And so at uh, t equals 0, which is 1940, what we are given is the urban, the rural, and the agricultural uh, percentages. Okay. So I'm going to write it like this. Um, U of 0, R of 0, and A of 0. And those percentages were given to us as 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and 0 0.4. Okay? Obviously, this adds up to 100% of, of the land. Okay, 10 years later, a follow-up survey was done. 70% of the urban land remained urban, 10% of it turned into rural, and 20% of it became agricultural. Okay, so what we're going to be wanting to do here is think about at one decade later, so which is 10 years later, I'm going to write this as u of t plus 1, r of t plus 1, and a of t plus 1. We want to figure out how to write that in terms of the current urban, rural, and agricultural uh, distributions of the land, right? So this is the current situation. This is what it is one decade later, okay? So let's think about, you know, from all of these words, we're going to fill in the numbers of this matrix, which is a 3 by 3, okay? This is what we would normally call capital A, right? So what land becomes urban? Well, look what it says here. 70% of the urban land remained urban. So that would be... I'm, thinking of the, I'm going to be thinking of this as a dot product over here. 0.7 times u of t, 70% of the urban land is going to still be part of what is considered urban at the next decade. Okay, uh, and then the rest of the urban land switched to some other category. Let's skip over that for the, for the time being. 20% of the rural land became urban. So. Not only is 70% of the current urban land going to stay urban, but 20% of the rural land is going to become urban. Okay? And finally, it looks like none of the agricultural land is going to become urban, so that's going to be zero. Right? That's going to be zero. Okay. 
Um, let's, tr let's, let's look at the rural land. I hope this is making sense. This is the part about setting up the, the matrix here. So how much land will be rural after 10 years go by? Well, 10% of the urban land becomes rural. So that's going to be, let me circle that in red here. So that's going to be 0.1. Put this in red. Okay, so 0.1, 10% of the urban land becomes rural. How much of the rural land that we have now will still be rural? Well, 60%, right? 60% of the rural land remains rural. And then how much of the agricultural land? 20% of the agricultural land becomes rural. Do you see how we're doing this as a dot product, right? The rural land next decade is going to be 10% of the current urban land plus 60% of the current rural land plus 20% of the current agricultural land. So we add those together. Okay, and then finally, what about the agricultural land? Well, 20% of the urban land becomes agricultural. So that's 20% of the urban, that's 0.2. 20% of the urban land is going to become agricultural. 20% um, of the rural land becomes agricultural, and 80% of the agricultural land stays agricultural. One of the things about these Markov matrices is that the columns always add up to one. Okay, so that's one way to check yourself that, that you've done it right. Okay, now the question is asking you how much uh, percentage of urban, rural, and agricultural land will we have in 1960? You can tell that that's exactly, that's exactly two decades after the initial configuration. So what you're really looking for then, what you're really trying to solve for, is U of 2, R of 2, A of 2, right? And this is just going to be, this is just going to be A squared times the initial configuration, which is 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and 0.4. So you don't really need to diagonalize the matrix here because you're only being asked to square this matrix. So that can be done fairly quickly. It's just a three by three. Even though there are decimals here, eh, it's not really too bad to do it. Um, so I'm going to leave it to you guys to check that the answer will be 0 0.197, 0 0.339, and 0.464, okay, and you know, without a calculator it's a little messy to come up with that, but that's basically the idea here, okay. If we wanted to know how much um, land was urban, rural, or agricultural many, many decades into the future, we really would need to diagonalize this matrix. But it's not a very easy one to diagonalize by hand because the entries are mostly non-zero. The characteristic equation is going to be tr tricky. Finding the eigenvalues is going to be tricky uh, without using a calculator, right? So, so this is problem is more just to help you to see how to set it up properly. Um, then the mechanics of the diagonalization should kick in, and you do the usual process of of um, finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, right? Eventually, you come up with the usual equation, you know, S inverse AS is equal to D. And so if you want to take a high power of A, well, you're going to do it by taking a high power of the diagonal matrix of the eigenvalues and sandwiching it between S and S inverse uh, in the usual fashion. And then once you know how to find a high power of A, you'll be able to multiply that high power against this initial uh, distribution of land to find the land at any later time. Okay, so that's the basic principle behind it. I hope it kind of makes sense. It's just a, a three by three version of the same kind of problems that uh, I mentioned earlier about students switching between two sections of a professor or ants crawling between two different rooms in a uh, building um, in, in a Markov process where the uh, the time evolution of the of the system is what you're is what you're looking at in the long run. So, okay, I hope that made sense. Um, feel free to ask me more questions if it's not. Okay, thank you so much.